Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mowgli from The Jungle Book here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about Kingfisher Airlines. It was created by the chairman of the United Breweries Group, Vijay Malia. Malia was an Indian billionaire known for his extravagant spending. He owned a Formula One team, a cricket team, and even a French island called Saint Marguerite. His reputation was so well known he was dubbed the king of good times. However, everything fell apart when he created Kingfisher Airlines. Due to a series of reckless moves, the company accumulated billions of dollars of debt. As a result, Malia fled the country and is now a fugitive fighting extradition charges to India for financial crimes. This is the rise and fall of Kingfisher Airlines. Vijay Malia was born on December 18, 1955 in Karnataka, India. He took over his father's position as chairman of the United Breweries Group, aka UBG, in his 20s after he passed away. His father had become a millionaire selling a branded beer called Kingfisher to his fellow Indians. And well, Vijay wasn't discreet like his father. He was quite loud and flamboyant. I drive a Mercedes, I have a BMW. I fool around with a Porsche and a Maserati occasionally. And the road if that's driver. called flamboyance, I mean... That's called style. <laughs> All right, style of flamboyance, whatever you may say. He just loved parties and spending massive amounts of cash. Accordingly, Malia also believed Kingfisher beer should represent his ideals. He wanted to brand it as a beer for those who loved a festive lifestyle. So Malia devised a series of ads in the 1990s that showed people enjoying Kingfisher to the beat of a catchy tune. <laughs> Just too much. The ads epitomized youthfulness, vigor, and energy. And the jingle became so iconic for the 90s it was like a Furby MP3. The marketing was a smash hit and appealed to the growing population of India who wanted an affordable, tasty beer. And the face of the brand was none other than the king of good times, Vijay Malia. Due to its success, Malia became a billionaire. Unlike most other wealthy Indians at the time, he proudly flashed his cash and made sure people knew who he was. You thought I was going to say cock, didn't you? I'm not your mother. Malia often wined and dined with India's elite and hung out with Bollywood celebrities. He also reportedly owned over 200 cars, a 315 foot yacht, and a castle. He even sponsored a Kingfisher Calendar Girl competition. However, in 1995, the Indian government banned the advertisement of alcohol to protect the health of its citizens. This was a major setback for Malia as he was forced to figure out a solution to save his business. So he devised a scheme so cunning it was as if a Bond villain contrived it. In 2005, Malia created Kingfisher Airlines. This was particularly shocking considering he had zero aviation related business experience. The move was a classic display of an old technique called surrogate advertising that was popular in India. Surrogate advertising Advertising is when a company produces other products to create brand awareness for another product that's usually banned. For example, tobacco companies often made hats, keychains, or t-shirts with the intention of raising recognition for their cigarettes. But these products were simply too small for the king of good times. He needed a surrogate that matched his ostentatious personality. Malia had to own the skies themselves. You kind of have to give him credit for the idea though. Yes, it was expensive, but there was a rising middle class in India and a market for a budget airline. If managed properly, the company could generate profit and market the beer. And come on, what could possibly be a better logo for an airline than a bird? After its foundation, Kingfisher Airlines became the hottest new way to fly. Malia customized it to match his personality. He hired models instead of flight attendants, served gourmet cuisine, and provided plush seating. From the day we've started flying, I've tried to create the finest experience for you and bring back the element of style in travel. This Airbus aircraft is equipped with several unique features which I hope you will enjoy. Food has always been my passion and drinks my business. I invite you to savor our fine range of cocktails and choice of gourmet cuisine that I encourage the finest chefs to create. Each member of your cabin crew has been handpicked by me and I have instructed them to treat you as a guest in my own home. King Fisher doesn't hire flight attendants like other airlines. We choose only models. Most importantly though, seats were sold at a very cheap price. Tickets were cheap, so I just thought I'll Tickets just... Tickets were cheap? Yeah, it was 6000 for one trip. Cheaper than other airlines right now. Yeah. <laughs> it was the cheapest. When we saw the net, it was the cheapest rate. Fortunately, Kingfisher Airlines was an astounding success. The planes carried millions of paying customers and after several years, Kingfisher became India's second largest airline. I think the most important aspect for us is to treat our customers as guests and not as passengers. 
and uh, uh, you know so that they have a comfortable uh, journey on uh, on the flight and have a good time. In addition, Molly's reputation changed from a scummy alcohol baron to that of a business magnet. However, the fame quickly flew to his head. Vijay soon grew frustrated with running a budget airline. Malia wanted Kingfisher to stand out and be more lavish, so he made several catastrophic changes. First, he purchased billions of dollars worth of unnecessary big planes and introduced classes. This was problematic because budget airlines typically had one class and utilized the standard plane size to keep costs low. The business model requires high volume to keep the razor thin margins profitable. If the airline even did something as small as allowing each passenger to carry an extra bag, it could throw off everything. In addition, adding classes required more stratification of the current system, which wasn't equipped to handle it. On top of that, the larger planes required more flight attendants, sorry, I mean models, which raised operating costs. Simply put, Malia transitioned from a budget airline to a regular one despite there being a significant number of competitors. As if that wasn't enough, he didn't even raise ticket prices. Soon, every seat was no longer being filled and Kingfisher Airlines was hemorrhaging money. Vijay then made things worse when he tried to save the company by acquiring another low-budget airline, Air Deccan, in order to obtain its international routes. However, he just ended up compounding the financial losses he already had by making his failing company bigger. He was losing money faster than an investor in Phase K's crypto scam and had to keep borrowing hundreds of millions of dollars from India's national banks. And while well, things hit rock bottom when fuel prices later tripled, further increasing costs. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, if uh, you want to draw conclusions, well... But I you are in a financial mess, is that correct? I mean, we were not the verge of bankruptcy, but, how... but financially the airline is, is, is debt-ridden, financially the airline is uh, looking at talking to lenders, talking to its banks, trying to get even working capital assistance at this time. Would that be correct? You can call it a mess, you can call it whatever you want. That perhaps is because you don't have a full understanding. In 2005, Kingfisher's debt was $13 million, but by 2009, that number jumped to over $3 billion. Money got so tight, flight attendants had to find food themselves in order to feed passengers. However, when the dust settled, it was revealed Malia hadn't paid his Indian employees for the past 15 months. Today, former employees of the now defunct Kingfisher Airlines held protests in Mumbai, demanding that the Prime Minister step in and ensure that they get their salaries, which have been due since 2012. Many of them weren't paid salaries for months and years altogether. In fact, there are still people who are on the payroll but haven't been receiving their salaries. I caught up with those people and here's what they had to say. Pay us our dues. Unpaid salaries which run into a whopping 800 crore rupees. Former employees of the defunct Kingfisher Airlines protesting in Mumbai against ex-chairman Vijay Malia. The dear SPM should intervene in between and do something about the staff salaries. Not only about the bank, but he should think about the staff salaries who are facing so much problems. One employee's wife even committed suicide due to the financial struggle. The wife of an employee of the troubled airlines committed suicide on Thursday. The suicide note found in her southwest Delhi home said that her husband had not been paid for the last six months. She is also understood to have been battling depression and was found hanging from the ceiling by her neighbours and rushed to a local hospital. She didn't survive. And despite everything that was going on, Vijay still decided to host his 60th birthday party, which cost $2 million. He even flew Enrique Iglesias out to perform. Malia wanted to be the king of good times, even during bad times. Astonishingly, he continued to pour financial resources into his cricket team and Formula One team. Malia's cold-hearted decisions were the nail in the coffin for his reputation. He was like Maria Antoinette, completely oblivious to the suffering of his own people. Sadly, he didn't even think he was doing anything wrong. Indians fostered a burning hatred for him because he flaunted his wealth in their faces while refusing to pay them. Malia had gone from the beloved party boy to public enemy number one. Due to the mounting pressure, he was forced to resign as chairman. Eventually, the Indian national banks Malia borrowed from realized his company was unsalvageable, his debt was growing, and he had no intention of paying them back. By 2015, Malia generated $1.5 billion worth of unpaid loans. So in 2016, the banks filed legal action against him, which resulted in the Indian government issuing a warrant for his arrest. But Malia was long gone. He had fled to London several months prior. I want to try and settle with these banks and then live my life in peace. And that's my focus right now. Do you think that you will ever be able to go back into business in India? Well, I, I currently have businesses in India which uh, I don't intend to sell. Um, and these businesses are doing very well. Uh, you asked me whether I could go back to India. Well, if I had a passport, 
I could, but right now I'm in forced exile. In 2016, Malia gave up control of his cricket team, the Royal Challengers Bangalore. In 2018, his Formula One team, Sahara Force India, fell into financial ruin and was sold to Racing Point. Fortunately, in June 2021, a British court declared Malia bankrupt and the State Bank of India was able to recover some of the debt by forcibly selling his stocks. As of the making of this video, Malia is still living as a fugitive in London, fighting against extradition to India. Kingfisher Airlines is long gone, but the beer still exists. Thanks so much for watching. This was my first ever rise and fall of a company. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment so I know to make more. See you in the next one.